Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you The 2020 Reflection 315 RLTS. For more information on this camper or any others, be sure if you call, if you email, or if you stop by Beckley's Camping Center, you do ask for Paul the Air Force guy. If this is the first time you're, you're joining me, or if you're joining me again and you haven't subscribed, please do consider the subscribe button is down below there. Little bell right next to it, if you ring that bell or click that bell, that will allow uh, YouTube to go ahead and subscribe. Uh, as a subscriber, you will be notified of any new videos that I do put up. Do appreciate those of you to watch, and please do stay tuned till the end because I've got lots of good information talking about the differences of this 2020. So let's get on to this camper. Now let's start with in the kitchen area here. You have a nice little countertop, great for putting coffee pots, things of that nature over here serving. You're gonna have drawers down below. You have two drawers down below here. And as you can see, I mean, they're not very deep drawers, but they're drawers anyway. Now down below these drawers here, you'll see this area that looks like this. This is the air return, so the cool air return for your furnace. So the furnace will be right outside to the outside wall on this. And you're gonna notice obviously that there's no uh, heat ducts on the floor because they put them. And of course right here, this is where you're gonna have your power vent fan control. That's your max air, and then your heating and air conditioning is right there. Now your max air fan is right here in the kitchen. And that's gonna be right above the cooktop, which I'll get to later. And you do actually have a window that you're able to draw that air in from. Now, right above here in this cabinet, this is where you're gonna have your controls for your slide, your awnings, your lights, tanks, water heater. Everything is right there, easily accessible, and you can see you still get into the cabinet up above there. So you see with this one here, you do have the 12 cubic foot refrigerator. That's gonna be your four door refrigerator as we would call it. As you can see, quite the storage in this refrigerator freezer. And you can see that the freezer even comes with their own little ice maker in each side. Quite the feature there. Now, so next to your cooktop there, you can see you have adequate counter space as well as an outlet. Now you do have the window there, and that window you can actually open it so that you're able to utilize this for ventilation if you're gonna be using the fan up top here in the roof. Because the exhaust fan on your convection microwave here does not exhaust to the outside. Very similar to some of those that you may have in your home where it just exhausts at the top of the microwave. Now with your Furion oven cooktop, you do have a light inside. This is the larger of the ovens that is available. But the nice thing with that light, you also have a glass door so you're actually able to see what you have going on inside of the oven. Now something I like about this Furion oven is the fact that this sparker here, not only does that light the three burners on the top, that'll also light the oven, so you no longer have to be sticking that uh, big lighter back in the back of that oven to get it lit. As you can see on the front, you can see the lights here, they're actually blue lights, if you wanna have those on. Now, that's right around each of the dials, and then of course, as I mentioned, you have the light inside the oven. Taking a look at the storage you have here, very good storage down below there, as well as this drawer. Notice it's a full extension drawer glide, as well as having good storage down below the drawer as well. 
as you can see for your island, you have three drawers, and those are considered full extension drawer glides on them, but nice and deep and long. Now then underneath of your sink here, you're gonna see very well set up for you. Everything's out of the way. You see how they've piped everything through there, giving you adequate space underneath here. Looking at the sink here, nice big sink, kind of like a country kitchen sink. Full, you have the pull down faucet there, high rise, it swivels around as you need it. And of course, then you have your cutting boards here. Now, the nice thing with these is you can set this so you can use one side of the uh, uh, sink there and still give you additional counter space. Now in every grand design, they go ahead and give you, or you should see one of these in here, talking to you about how grand design was uh, started. And it's quite the story. I'll have that link down below. And uh, do ask your salesperson about that and have them go into detail, because it's quite an impressive story. Now, finishing off the kitchen, you're going to have this pantry. Nice thing about the pantry is the fact that it has, as you saw the light come on, it's that you have a sensor light in there. You can have it on all the time, or you can set it for sensor or have it off. But notice how the shelves, massive shelves, but notice how they're set back from the door frame. That way there, if you, if you need to, you can go ahead and place a mop or a broom inside the closet and close the door. As you can see, when the light is on, you can see into it, but that is gonna go off here momentarily, and it'll turn on next time it senses motion. Now, moving into the living area, as you can see, you have a nice little fireplace. That is an electric fireplace. You can set it just for ambiance, or if you'd like, you can set it and actually have heat thrown off in here. It will supplement the heat. Right above that, you can see you have a nice big TV. That TV, you could, if you wanted to, you could probably get one that's a little bit bigger, but that is gonna be directly across, as you can see, from where you're sitting if you're in the recliners, or if you're stretching out of this couch, like I'm doing right now, it makes it very easy for you to see what is in on the TV itself. Now a little different as far as how they have the, uh, the drawers and your storage space around your uh, fireplace here than last year. Just wanna give you a little idea of what you've got there. That's around the fireplace. Then above the TV is pretty much the same. You have this space up here. Now if you wanted to add something, you have a 110 plug and you have a little hole to fish it down for the TV. You've got your AM FM CD stereo with a DVD player, also a USB aux plug that's in it. So that's right there, inside, outside stereo speakers. And then of course, then your additional storage on this side. Now your sofa back here, it is a trifold bed. You've got end tables on either side with storage as well as a 110 outlet down below on either side of these. Now, let me show you how easy it is to make this sofa into an actual bed. Just take the cushions off the back. Now, they can be put back on here once the bed is open. And then all you're gonna be doing is you lift right in this area. As you can see, it lifts up. You're gonna put the legs out, drop it down, and there's your bed. Now, this gives you a bed that's 70 inches lengthwise approximately 57 inches wide. To put it back away, basically the same thing, we're just in the, just a little different here, but by the way, when, you, when you're putting this away, you will have a little bit of space left in between here where you could store some blankets, maybe just pillows, because as this is folding back down in there, you'll actually be able to see where that one section goes down and you'll be able to see the height that you have uh, to maybe put a couple of things down there. These will just go back on the back here. As you can see, they Velcro to the back, keeps them from moving around as it's driving down the road and as you're sitting in the sofa. So that is how easy that sofa makes a bed. So as you can see, your recliners here, you do have three different cup holders. You can see the blue lights that are gonna be on the bottom. 
So this is the Thomas Paine collection. And of course you're gonna have the light, you can have it in, you have it in the cup holder. You also have heat and massage that is gonna be on both of those recliners. And they're like the wall wake recliner so you can actually um, lay all the way back. And of course you'll notice the little storage pouch in the middle where you put your um, remote controls for the TV and for your fireplace. Now, in the event that you're a grandparent, as you can see, this, these recliners are set up perfectly so that your grandchild can sit in between you while you're watching a movie. Taking a look at the dinette booth, you can see they've, got it, they've kind of made it uh, a combination dinette booth, freestanding table, but let me show you what is changed here. So as you can see on this side, you have a little, I guess you call it a booth seat, but this also is storage down below and you can move it around. So let's say you wanted to store some blankets, some pillows or so forth, look at how much storage you have inside of here. But then you say, you know what, Paul, I'd like to have a place for me to kick my feet up when I'm on the sofa. There you go. So you can just pull it out and use it for a cocktail table to kick your feet up, whatever works for you. And as you can see for the back of, this is the panel part that would go over here, you can see how they have it where they just latch on so you can take them off if you don't want them there and you have all that space right there. So even while it is back in here, makes it very easy for you to lift and get to things that are stored in there. You also have room underneath your seat cushions here on both of those chairs. So that is the new design for the dinette table. What are you thinking? You liking it? And we can't forget about the 110 outlet that is down underneath the table. Gives you that ability to be working with your laptop or charging your phone while you're sitting at a table. So this is the new look of the 315 interior. What are you thinking? Comment down below, let me know. So as you came in the door and you wanted to go down towards the bedroom area, you're gonna notice up above you have a motion sensor light. You can set that to be on, off, or on sensor. So that way there are no searching, no more searching for the light switch as you come in, and no more bugs sitting up against the door because you have the lights on. Now looking into the bathroom, you're going to see plenty of room in front of your uh, toilet there. Notice the heat duct underneath the, coming up from underneath the shower. And that's a good size shower you have there. Very tall in here. I'll give you the dimensions here momentarily. Notice the skylight and you do have your glass doors. Right here for your sink, you're going to have nice drawers, good counter space, and a medicine cabinet. Give you an idea of what the medicine cabinet looks like. Of course, you notice that you do have an outlet, GFI protected here in your bathroom. Little towel holder right next to your sink as well. You see you have good storage down underneath of your sink in the bathroom. And then you have three drawers, not very big as you can see, but again, adequate because you have three of them. And then of course, above the toilet, you're gonna have these two shelves and then with your towel holder, you can see your light switch as well as the fan switch right on the wall as you come in the door. Now, speaking of the door, the nice thing, I really love the fact that in most of the grand design, you have a pocket door going into the bathroom. That way there, the door's not in the way when it's open. Now, I've had a few people ask me, hey, Paul, why don't you stand in that shower? Give us an idea how big it is. Now, let me let you know how big of an individual I am. I'm five foot eight. About 170 pounds. Now that's without my hat and without heels, by the way. So stepping in the shower, what you're going to have is you're going to have 36 inches this way, and it's 27 inches to the glass. Now obviously it's going to be a little bit longer when you have the that's the interior glass. You'll have a couple more inches because this is a trifold door here. Height-wise, you have this is 81 inches tall. So as you can see, you've got pretty good. Uh, space inside of this shower and 
Also, the, the base of this shower is very sturdy as well. I know that's concern sometimes for some folks. And I do tell you, step in the shower if you can. I know we're getting to the point where we're going to winterize them, I and you might have winterization stuff in here. Kind of creates a mess at that point. But uh, hopefully that gives you an idea how big the shower is. Now, coming into the master bedroom here, you can notice a dresser. And you're going to notice also you have a pocket door, which is nice. They makes it a wider style doorway. So just so you know, this the doorway is 27 inches wide, and at the height there, at the header, it's 75 inches tall. Now, it does come wired and framed for a second air conditioner, and that is something that we can put in, and it would be just like having one put in at the factory. I know some people are concerned about that, but that is not something that, um, that we have a problem doing here. So you see you have the dresser there, nice window that you can open it. And of course you can put a TV that would be directly across from your bed. Give you an idea of the depth and the size of the cabinets, that or the drawers, that's what you're looking at there. Up above on either side of the TV, you can see how deep the shelves are there as well. Now on this particular model we have the queen bed and I just wanted to show you the space that you have on the sides of the mattress. Let me just show you here. So the space on the side, you're going to have about 20 inches of, of clearance here on the side and you're at about 13 inches on this side of the bed. But this is with the queen bed. Now this queen bed is an actual residential queen, meaning that it is 60 inches wide by 80 inches in length. Now you can elect to get a king mattress and the king mattress, it can be 70 to 72 inches wide. You just lose the little end tables on either side, as well as you're gonna lose the additional space, walk around space on either side. I always love it. In a grand design, I love showing people what it looks like when you look under the bed because not all manufacturers do it the way grand design does. And that is, you see how high that mattress gets up out of the way. It makes it very easy for me to step over here and I'm able to reach in, get put my stuff in there or grab it and get it out of there. I don't have to, a lot of, a lot of manufacturers, they have it where it'll only be up about that high and now you got to get down on your hands and knees to get under it. So check that out next time you're in one of the grand designs. Now since you do not have a walk-through bath, that's giving you this extra storage over here. So you can have two drawers with full extension drawer glides as well as inside of here. Now take a look inside there. You'll notice you're going to have another, again, another sensor light. So as it senses movement, which when I open that door, the light came on. But you can hang things in there or you can make it additional uh, shelving. You're going to notice on this side of the bed you have your 110 outlet for this side of the bed. As well as notice that the heat duct, again, up off the floor. Going to be blowing it across the room here, making it much, uh, much nicer as far as airflow. Now, before I open this closet, I just want to mention a couple things. You can have that locked in the, in the closed position like this, or you can even fasten it when you open it because it has the straps on it and some uh, snaps in place so you can leave it open if you wish to. So this is what your closet looks like in the bedroom. Almost like a walk-in closet, except of course you have a little step up, right? Because this is in a travel trailer. You've got the pass-through storage out there. And by the way, the nice thing is with that is you have a little hamper area, so you can actually set your dirty clothes basket down there, get it out of the way. Of course, this also makes for a nice little way of getting in in the event you locked your keys inside. Assuming, depending on whether or not you had this door locked inside here. Now, looking inside the closet, as you can see, it's a large lot of storage. And on this side, this is set up so that if you want to put a combination washer dryer or just a regular washer, you can put it on this side. You see the dryer vent um, center line is set up for you. 
And of course, this, this shelving would come out in the event that you made this a washer dryer area. Then on the other side, again, you could put a dryer over here. It has the outlet. It's already set up for it. And again, you just lose this shelf on this side. So you can put a combination washer and dryer or a separate washer dryer in here. And you're going to notice that, again, another sensor light inside of the closet. So giving you another look at the bedroom itself. And this is as you'd be walking out of the bedroom, give you a different look at the trailer. So the first thing you know when you look at the reflection, you notice the one piece molded fiberglass cap with the little LED lights, and you look at how shiny the paint is on it. Now the benefit of having a one piece fiberglass cap is the fact of durability, and the fact that the seam now is back here instead of being on the front of the camper. So that is a major benefit when you have a full molded fiberglass cap. Now you're gonna have electric tongue jack, 30 pound bottles back here, as well as you'll have the battery put back here. Now because of the space there, you can actually put two batteries there if you wish to. Now I just wanted to show you the roof of the reflection. They do a phenomenal job sealing everything up. You're going to notice that you're going to have the wine guard Air 360 for your TV antenna. That should really help you get those local stations in. And then you're also going to have the Jaboni. That's installed on all of the new reflections. And that Jaboni is hardwired down here. That's what this wire is for. So you can put that directly to your battery. You can connect a 100 watt solar panel on the roof. That way there you're not having that solar panel springing legs and walking away. Now looking down, this is the off door side of the 315. One thing you're gonna notice is when you open these doors, how much thicker they are compared to some of the other manufacturers. You're also gonna notice, I only had one hand, I was able to open that door, magnetically held in place. And that gives you access in here to your outside shower. It's gonna give you hot and cold water. You've got your front cap light, water pump, hook up for cable, satellites all in here. Be sure that you have somebody explain this to you here, the system. It looks complicated, but once you break it down, very simplistic. Next, you have your city water connection and a black tank flush. Now, for the black tank flush, I actually did a video. I'll link that down below something that most people don't understand when they're using the black tank flush how they should be utilizing that now right here this is a 110 outlet nice thing with that if you decided you wanted to heat in this area here because you're camping in colder weather you can notice the light that's on the other side you can have it on like i do right now you can set it for sensor light it's all right here some people look at this gray pole here and think what the heck is that for that is for the gray tank in the event, well, gray tank pull, in the event that you had a washer up in the bedroom area. Now also right in this area is the, the power pan, panel for your Schwintech slide system for the bedroom. Be sure that you have somebody adequately explain that to you because it is, it is very important to understand how this slide mechanism works and how to utilize that uh, brains, if you want to call it there, in the event that you have an issue. Now, because you're bringing your water hose and your cable up through here, something I recommend you do is get yourself some brass wool and put it around here, around your hose and cable. Leave it in there when you're not using it and make sure that you shut it, shut it off properly to keep the critters from coming in. Now something else to consider, you're going to have your hose and cable coming up through here and going through the floor there. Keep in mind that is a highway to your camper. You might want to consider putting some Vaseline on it so that way there the critters can't climb up it. Now as you're looking underneath here, you're going to notice of course the underbelly is sealed. It's enclosed and sealed. Notice how they're putting the strip, the metal strip, all the way across the front there, keeping air from getting up there. This is your low point drains 
right up in the front here. I'm right underneath the door here for your washer and dryer area. Also going to know that you have the power stabilizing system so it's electric stabilizers on the front and rear for your camper. Staying underneath here, now I'm underneath the bedroom slide. This is where you have your uh, fresh water tank dump, low point drains, and as well as the overflow for your fresh water tank. So when that's full, you will see water pouring out of it. Now keep in mind one thing though, if you fill that and tow your trailer, there's a chance that you could siphon all of your water out. So just be careful of that. Now just underneath the back side of your slide out here for the bed, you're going to have your sewer hose storage. Now the reason why it's here because you're not going to you're going to see when we get to the back, you do not have a bumper. Much um, much better storage area here versus a bumper. As we move after that, you can see that you have sewer hose connection is in a convenient location. Now you're going to have two gray tanks as well, in addition to the one for the uh, your washer dryer, well the washer that is, you're going to have one for the kitchen as well as one for the bathroom here. And then of course your black tank and all that's going to come out in one location. Now as you can see something they added here is a little light for where your sewer hose is and that's all it is, a little push button right here. Now on the bed slide, you have outside storage here, and again you have a metal holder for it, and the door is still as thick, so it's going to be nice, but this is your storage out here. Going to have your Atwood water heater, and by the way, I'll link a video down on how to properly operate your water heater. For those of you that might want to know a little bit about that, because I know there's a lot of people that have had issues with that. They're just not doing things, I guess, quite in the right order. But that'll be linked down below. This is where you're going to have your 50 amp connection. Now, right now, I have it plugged down to 30, which you can if you need power. Just couldn't run two ACs at the same time. And then right after that is your furnace. Now be very careful with the furnace being here. Do not have your electrical cord being pulled across in front of these because that's going to be a hot air exhaust. Make sure you have that out of the way. It will melt the cord. Now you're going to notice you have Load Rage E 16 inch tires and of course the green cap meaning that it is filled with nitrogen. Now just because these are filled with nitrogen, of course the benefit of nitrogen is the fact that uh, less chance of air being seeped out through the rubber. Uh, but if you do need to put uh, fill air pressure, you can actually use regular air. It is not going to create a problem. Now speaking about tires, just so that you understand that everyone, all the manufacturers put a tire sticker on here telling you the max PSI for your tires front and rear. Make sure you comply with that and use accordingly. And what you'd want to do is understand that's max pressure. If you don't have your trailer maxed out, you don't necessarily need to have max air pressure on your RV. So this is the kitchen slide and you can see because the refrigerator is in the slide out, you do have access panels behind this. Just to let you see what's behind it here, there's a look behind. Something I'd highly recommend for those of you especially live in hotter climates is because you have the refrigerator in this particular panel, get somebody, whether it's yourself or somebody else, to install some 12 volt fans to be throwing some air on the backside to help cool it down which will help uh, regulate your refrigerator better. If you ever have a problem with your refrigerator not working on 110, you can see the 110 cord is here and back there against the wall is the 110 plug. Always check that plug, make sure that you have power at the plug. So looking on the back side of the camper here, you can see it's wired and framed for the Furion rear observation camera. Benefit with the rear observation camera is the fact that you can actually see what's behind you as you're traveling down the road. A ladder makes it beneficial for you to get up to clean your roof as well as clean off the, uh, the tops of your slides prior to bringing your slide outs in. 
As I had mentioned, no bumper back here, but you do have a hitch receiver. Bear in mind that that thing has a 300 pound limit. It is not meant to be towing a car or a trailer behind you. Right here, there will be a sticker on the uh, hitch receiver explaining that to you. On your door side, as you can see, you're gonna have two awnings, two electric awnings, so you don't have, they're individually operated, although the lights underneath of them are not individually operated. But I love the way that these work because what you're doing, in order to slant them, you're actually pulling it here. And even though I've just pulled just the one, as you can see now, it'll be dropping the water to this side. I don't need to adjust that when I pull the, uh, when I go ahead and pull the awning in, it will self-adjust itself. And now you can see when I have both of them pulled there, the, the slope is much greater. Now, do not rely on, to, you know, leaving it straight like this, leaving your arm straight and relying on the struts themselves from dumping the water. I know it happens sometimes, but it's gonna be that one time when it pours too heavily and it will puddle up on the roof of that awning and it will break at some point. So be careful of that. As you can see on the outside slide out, you're gonna have a connection. This is your 110 connection right here. And then of course you have your cable connection. So you can connect a TV outside for your viewing pleasure. So this is what your door side would look like. Now right here at the steps, they've got a little blue light that's here. And that blue light, what's nice about that when you're camping, it's not attracting the bugs, but that will allow you to be able to see your steps as you're going in. You're also gonna be noticing that the blue lights are in your stereo speakers up underneath your awning there. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the 2020 315 RLTS Reflection by Grand Design. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you're thinking about the new uh, colors. Outside's white now, the interior's changed up a bit. So uh, let me know, appreciate you do uh, commenting below. Give me the thumbs up if you're liking what I'm throwing down here. And as I mentioned, I do appreciate you watching. Uh, for more information on this camper or any others, be sure if you call if you email or if you stop by Beckley's Camping Center here in Thurmont, Maryland, you do ask for Paul the Air Force guy. Thanks again and I'll be back at you again soon. Take care.